Hello my loves, welcome back to another video. I'm Ashley and today we are going to be talking about my favourite reads of 2022 so far. And I'm just going to jump straight on in and talk about two books that I've mentioned recently so I won't go on about these too much because these both were in my June wrap up. But first up we of course have Babel by R.F. Kuang. This one is a dark academia book following a guy called Robin who is born in Canton but when he is still pretty young he is taken from Canton to London by an English professor, raised under quite heavy tutelage of languages, translation, things like that, and then when he's old enough he's sent to a university in Oxford called Babel which is basically like a translation institute and this does have fantasy elements in it only a little bit but it is there but translation goes heavily into the magic and how that's formed so we get to see a little bit of that but where Babel starts out as a kind of haven for academics you do end up uncovering the darker side to academia and everything that lies within the Tower of Babel the longer we spend there. This book is just incredible it really is just a feat of accomplishment. This is a book that makes you feel intelligent while you're reading it, it engages you with the conversations that's going on, it's very heavily influenced by colonialism and touches upon that subject a lot so it is quite heavy on the racism too just a heads up and this book really takes no survivors like it really is quite cutthroat in just saying it how it is and really showing you the violence behind colonialism academia things like that even the friend group that we see within this book is incredibly complicated but it's why I loved it so much because it just is so impressive to read it showed such conflict and emotions between love and academia and hating it at the same time feeling a kind of moral discomfort towards enjoying this kind of thing knowing the roots of it and it was just it was just amazing I loved it so much I do have a full video on this book so I'll leave a link to that down below if you want maximum dark academia vibes I went walking around an old university building as such so definitely check that out if you haven't already but this was easy easily five stars for me from the second I started reading it I knew it would be pre-order this if you haven't already because amazing. And another one that was amazing is Master Artificer by Justin Cole. This one is the sequel to Master of Sorrows. In that book we are following a guy called Anev who attends a magical academy of sorts in which they are trained to go and collect magical artifacts and confiscate them from just the outside world because in this world magic is seen as evil or at least within this institution it's seen as evil and so they don't want these artifacts to be just out in the world. However Anev knows that magic is not inherently evil because it is actually helped him. He has a disability that magic has helped him with and so we see his inner conflict as he's taught one thing but knows another thing, tries to come to terms with which one is the truth. But this is also a villain origin series and so we have a lot bigger of a plot line on the outskirts as we head outside of this academy but this is where you start to see that scope and it was just so impressive. The mythology, the world building just continued but as I said in my June wrap up as well we do start to see the inner turn turmoil, the spiralling of mentality that goes into the villain origin story of all of these characters. You see such conflicting thoughts, you see a lot of authenticity about the thoughts you have in your brain versus what you say out loud and it was something that I really appreciated because not for a moment have I doubted the actions of any of these characters, not for a moment have I thought well that's a bit dramatic because it makes sense, you see every single thought in detail that goes into these characters and it's just incredible, I couldn't help but feel for every single character in one way or another and even though this book is absolutely ginormous I did not regret reading a single page of it absolutely loved it probably the strongest sequel I have ever read I cannot wait to see what Justin Cole does with this entire series because there are many books to follow this one and I am very impatient to continue so yeah another five star read right there one book which is a little bit different from the rest but I absolutely raved about I think back in January was A Compendium of Witches by Natasha Ilincic I think so this one is fiction and it takes I think how many people I can't remember how many but it takes a certain amount of witches inspired by women within history and tells their story and the thing is not only is the cover absolutely beautiful on this but every single page of this book is illustrated as well so you do have illustrations of every single witch that is featured 
within this book. And it was just so incredibly atmospheric. I really felt the voices of these women coming through the story and it was something that I picked up and could not put down again because I just felt like I needed to know the story of these women. It felt like a non-fiction book as well, even though it is fiction. So much so that I had to go and Google it because I fully convinced myself that this was actually non-fiction. But this is truly a treasure of a book and it's something that I really appreciate just existing. And it shows how people across the world, across cultures, have a lot more connections than people realize and put in place by like arbitrary guidelines or rules or differences that people put in place. And it just really made me appreciate the world a little bit more. So yeah, I love this book. <laughs> It really is just magical and wonderful and all of the good stuff. So there is also an Oracle deck that goes along with this book, which I did get afterwards. So I'm just glad to have even more of Natasha's artwork. And I really hope she does something else like this because I would buy that in a heartbeat. <laughs> Another witchy one actually is Hex by Jenny Fagan. This is a really tiny novella that is inspired by the story of Gillis Duncan, who was a woman accused of witchcraft in Scotland. In this one, we're following two women across two different timelines, one being Gillis Duncan, but one of them being a woman of modern times who tried travels back in time and basically spends the last day of Gaelish Duncan's life with her and just having a conversation and we witness that conversation and it is heartbreaking to say that this is so tiny. This book packs a punch. This came straight for the throw. It gave all of the really just touching scenes that you would expect between two women who are just accepting of what's going on. This isn't a book where, you know, you're trying to save the world or save someone's life. It is just acceptance and having a conversation about what that means and how the future is and seeing two different women communicating, understanding and relating across completely different time frames and parts of history, what's changed and what hasn't since then, and confront all of those things, it was just... Whoo. <laughs> This book convinced me that I need to read the entirety of Jenny Fagan's backlog of books. I have since bought one of them. I can't remember which one, I think The Looking Booth. I don't know if they even have the same vibes, but I am willing to give them a go because her writing in this was beautiful and it's very, very rare that my emotions can be tugged in so few pages, so I was impressed. <laughs> We then have a couple of fantasy romances, the first one being Beautiful Nightmares by KJ Sutton. This one is the fourth book in the Fortune Swan series. It's absolutely ginormous. I was so impatiently waiting for it. And then I got it and I devoured it and I loved it. The Fortuna Swan series follows a girl called Fortuna who is the last of her kind, her kind being a nightmare, meaning that she can influence people's deepest fears. At the beginning of the first book, her brother has been missing for quite a while and people are telling her that she should just give in and, you know, except that he's probably dead by now but then a fair prince turns up on her doorstep and is just like hey I know where he is but you have to marry me otherwise I'm not going to tell you where he is so she agrees to marry him goes into the unseelie court lots of political fantasy story goes from there we've got a whole trial situation in the first book but the series goes a lot further than that and with every single book these books just improve the scope of the world and the characters just keeps expanding and I keep being more and more impressed there are so many characters in this and I love absolutely all of them one of the series that I am so wholeheartedly dedicated to its characters and this one made me change allegiance which I never do so the character development is strong in this one <laughs> I don't think I've been this invested in a series for a long, long time, especially when it comes to romance, but I am just here for it. I am entirely at Kelsey's whim. Whatever happens in this book, it hurts. This is my vice and uh, I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. In a similar vein, we also have Blood Mercy by Vila Roth. This is one that I have not stopped raving about so far this year because this is the first book in a fantasy romance, very heavily political series. In this one, we are following two different races, I guess. We have humans and we have Hesperines who are vampire-like creatures and we see two people from these two different fractions come together one being the bastard daughter of the human king who is very cruel very strict and she just has to constantly play like the political court life game and then we also have the youngest diplomat of the Hesperines who is sent over to the humans as part of an envoy to try and come to some sort of agreement and inevitably they fall in love but it is definitely a romance that is one through words and that is something that I say a lot with the series because it's not the sort of fantasy romance that's just like straight up smut 
in there. It's quite slow moving and it is definitely a war of words, but that's what I really love about it. I love that sort of inching forward, the guardedness, really reading into what people say and just that kind of level of pedanticness, I guess. <laughs> Alongside the political plotline, which I just love in general, this ended up being something that I was so heavily invested in. It took me a while to read, but I enjoyed reading every single page of this book. It wasn't one that I got tired of reading. It wasn't one that I got impatient with. It was just one that I fully sunk into every single time. I was rooting for them to achieve whatever they wanted to do because we saw such planning ahead of time and just Oh my god, I love this book. And this is definitely a series that I'm now prioritising because I just, I gotta know. I gotta know if they get where they need to be, what the resolution is to this dire world that they're in. Ugh, just, just put one. <laughs> And then finally, of course, we do have The Diviners by Libba Bray. This one is set in 1920s New York and we're following Evie O'Neill who has a kind of strange ability, but she ends up being sent to live with her uncle after she's involved in a scandal in her smaller town. And her uncle just so happens to own a museum that is very much focused in on the occult and he has this fascination with the occult. So she's trying to keep it a secret that she has this ability of sorts. But then there is a serial killer going around who is leaving some occult symbols and so her uncle gets pulled in as a professional within this kind of study. Evie also gets involved through that because she just happens to be around a lot of the time, but she's also going through this whole debate of whether she lets people know that she has this ability because it could potentially help this investigation or if she keeps that secret or not. There are also other characters outside of Evie who also have different abilities going on and just seeing how all of their stories came together was so interesting. But what I loved about this book the most was the atmosphere because it's so clearly creepy paranormal. It was just the exact Halloween vibe that I would love. But there was also a really interesting layer of optimism above all of that because it's almost like the post-war pure faith that things are going to get better. Everyone's just trying to enjoy themselves. You've got jazz clubs, you've got music everywhere. This sense of flamboyancy going around and extravagance that really counteracts the dark creepy vibe that's going on. And I just found that worked perfectly. Absolutely love this, love the characters. They're all deeply flawed, but it was very entertaining to read about them. And I just loved this book. So I am continuing this series with my patrons. So we're just having a good time all around. And I deeply hope that I love the rest of the books in this series too. So these are my favorite books of this year so far. I've been having such a good reading time throughout this year so far. I feel like I have been zoning in more on the sort of thing that I like, figuring out what my favourites might be. I'm pretty sure this is more five-star reads than I've had at this point within a year for a long time, so hopefully that will continue through the rest of the year and we'll just find more and more favourites as we go. But I'd love to hear what your favourite books of this year have been so far. If you had to name one, maybe three, let me know. <laughs> and if you made it this far into the video, then leave some stars. Leave some stars. Why not? But for now, I shall love you and leave you and let go on with the rest of your day. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to leave a like and a comment to let me know that you're here. If you're not subscribed already, then please consider doing so. Down in the description box, you'll find information to all the books I've just mentioned, all of my social media and other bookish stuff as well. So be sure to check that out if you haven't already. But for now, I hope you're having a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye.